Welcome back. This is lesson 2.7, seven, journal. We are dividing fractions. So here it says, I will be able to correctly divide with fractions. I will use and estimation. to make a connection with multiplication and division. All right, vocabulary for this lesson. Fraction, we know what that is by now. Numerator, the top number on a fraction. Denominator, the bottom number on a fraction and equivalent fractions. Those are fractions that are equivalent to each other or equal in value. And reciprocal is a new one. So go ahead and pull out our vocabulary sheet. So go back to page 27, chapter 2 vocabulary. Okay, we're going to fill out these last two. Okay, a reciprocal is the inverse, inverse fraction. Okay, the inverse just means it's been flipped. So an example, 7 ninths, if I were to flip this fraction, that means my numerator is going to be on the bottom now, and my denominator is now going to be the numerator. So 9 sevenths is a reciprocal of 7 ninths. Okay, yesterday we talked about compatible numbers. Let's go ahead and fill this out. When estimating division, Choose numbers that work well together after rounding the divisor. All right, go ahead. That's all we're filling out for vocabulary. Go back to our page for today. All right, let's do this example together. Andy paints one third of a square foot of his bedroom wall every minute. If his wall, I should say, has an area of 250 square feet. How many minutes will it take to paint his wall? So this is how much she can do every minute. So we have a total amount of space that he's going to be painting, which is 250, and we're dividing it into the size of, that he can paint every minute. So he can paint one third of a yard each minute, or of a square foot each minute. So remember what we did with this yesterday? We have a unit fraction. So if we remember in third, I can make three one-third groups out of one whole. So that would be equal to three. So do you remember how that was the same as timesing our dividend by just the denominator here? So that would be 250 square feet times 3. So that would be 750 minutes. Okay, let's look at a model version. Monique has a 4 fifths gallon of juice. She's pouring 4 fifteenths of a gallon into each container. How many containers can she fill? Okay, so we need to have four fifths to begin with. So we're going to break this into five pieces. So five equal pieces. Now get your yellow highlighter and let's shade four of them. So four fifths. Fourths, and now we're trying to divide it into groups of four fifteenths. Okay, get your red pen out. I currently don't have this divided into fifteenths, but since this is already divided into five, if I cut it this way, now I have it broken into fifteenths, and we're pouring four fifteenths of a gallon into each container. 
So I'm going to take four fifteenths and put them in one group. There's four fifteenths. There's four fifteenths in another group. And four fifteenths in the last group. So if I were to write an equation for this, it would be four fifths divided by four fifteenths. And from our model, we can see that we got three containers worth. I was supposed to say containers, sorry, that is really poor handwriting. All right. So here, what is a reciprocal? It's a flipped fraction. So we are going to find the reciprocal of each fraction here. So flip this fraction. 3 fifths, that means 3 is now going to be on the bottom. 5 is going to be on the top. That's pretty simple. What about for 13 17 Or sorry, 13 over 7. Well, 7 on the top, 13 on the bottom. What about 6? Well, I have six, but what's the top of the fraction? What's the bottom? I want you to remember all whole numbers can be written over one. So the reciprocal of six over one would mean one on the top, six on the bottom. Okay, now this, a lot of kids would wanna write one and seven over two. You've got to turn this improper before you can flip it. So let's turn this back into an improper fraction. So 1 times 7 is 7 plus 2 more is 9. So this is equal to 9 sevenths. So the reciprocal of 9 sevenths would be 7 over 9. Now how can we use the reciprocal to help us solve fraction division problems? Well, I want you to look up here at this example. Notice how we times by three. What was our divisor? It was one third. What is the reciprocal of one third? Wouldn't it be three over one? Okay, look at this example. Four fifths. The reciprocal of this would be 15 over 4. And what was different over here? It was divide. I could rewrite it as times. Well, because you are doing the opposite of timesing when you divide, by flipping the fraction, you're actually going to undo that. So, you can keep the divisor the same. You can write the reciprocal of the divisor and you can multiply it and get the same answer. So if I were to do this, we already know the answer is 3 from looking at our picture. I can cross cancel 4 and 4. So 4 would be divided by 4 once and once. 1 or 5 and 15 share 5 in common. That would make this 1 and this 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. Isn't that the same as what we had up here? 3 containers. All right, so to re-answer this question, how can we use the reciprocal to help us solve fraction division problems? We can multiply the dividend, meaning the first number, by the reciprocal of the divisor. So we can multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. Okay, dividing fractions is as easy as one, two, three, as long as you remember to, KFC. Keep the first. So keep the first the same. Flip the second, and 
flip the second, change the sign. So, so change the sign to multiply. So, remember, as long as you remember to KFC. Let's try this example. Martin has 12 pieces of paper. He uses two thirds of a paper for each layer of paper mache for his project. How many layers can he make from the paper he has? So we are taking 12 sheets of paper. We're dividing it into for each layer. So if that's the case, I can keep the first fraction the same. I'm gonna write that as 12 over one. Flip the second fraction, so three over two. Change the sign to multiply. Now I can reduce if possible, so two divided by two is one. 12 divided by two is six. Three and one, I don't, can't cross cancel anything there, so across the top, six times three is 18 over, one times one is one. So I have 18 over one, so in other words, he can make 18 layers. Okay, just to check our answer, let's see if that's true. We can multiply these back and make sure it works. So 18 times 2 thirds. So times the divisor. Just proving that this works. Okay, cross cancel. Can't do anything this way, but this way we can. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 18 6 times. 6 times 2 is 12 over 1 times 1, which is 1. See how we have 12, our original answer? So this is just us checking. It worked. So that means that my answer is 18 layers of paper. All right, we have one more here. Let's try. April has five, six bucket of stain left to use for the legs of her table. She's going to use the same amount on each of the four legs. How much stain will she use on each leg? So we know a total. We know she has five, six of a bucket. She's going to use it up on each of the four legs. So I'm going to divide the legs by four. So keep the first, five, six. Flip the second. Remember, this is the same as four over one. So that would make this one over four. Change the sign to multiply. Now cross cancel if we can. One and six share nothing in common. Five and four share nothing in common. So I'm just going to multiply across the top. 5 times 1, which is 5. 6 times 4, which is 24. So, she is going to use 5 24ths of a bucket on each leg. Alright, rate yourself on a, this concept, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. 4 meaning you could teach something have any idea at all that way I can help you better when we come back and put this on your Google Doc and Google Classroom